Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It's fantastic to have you here. It's also fantastic to be joined by Mike Great Pullen from TA Outdoors. Make sure you go check out his channel. Yesterday, we forged up a little small hatchet. It ended up smaller than it was meant to be, and that's my fault. Um, <laughs> so when you forge stuff, obviously you heat it up to a high temperature. That high temperature means it's oxidizing very fast, which means that you're losing metal to the oxidation process, which means that you lose it to scale. We wanted a pound and a half hatchet, so I started with 2.2 pounds. It took us so long to forge the thing uh, that it ended up 1.3 pounds, which is bad. But, it's, I think it's, uh, I bit my tongue. Ow. Ah. Ah. But that's all right, because we're still gonna be able to turn out a nice little tool. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you enjoy the video. How sweet that profile is looking. You're doing a great job, Mike. Great! That's looking beautiful. Oh, that is hot. Ow, 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 ow! <laughs> well, which one of us is going in? Oh, uh, 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 yuck. Right, beautiful profile on the little small hatchet there. Got the pole squared away a little bit, which is good. The edge has been brought to the profile that we want, which is great. Now what we need to do with the edge profile is break down the edge, start getting the geometry. We're gonna leave it thicker for the heat treat, but we do need that geometry in there. So uh, Mike, here you go. Start, uh, start getting that edge geometry in there. You'll be all right. Hey, we've all, we've all been there, we've all had to do it. Right, we got it ground. Time for the heat treat. The forge is turned way down low. You ready? Yeah. And so it's now time for the quench. Five, four, three, two, one. Treated. We've uh, we also oiled it a little bit there. That gives it a nice black finish. It's now time for us to finish up that edge, bring that edge to its final geometry, polish the edge, make sure that that edge is sharp as can be. From there, it's gonna be time to work on the handle. So uh, we're gonna suit up, do some more grinding, and then a little bit of woodwork. Right, so we're gonna be wanting a convex grind. So we're gonna flip that platen around. I think we can go to 120. I'm gonna tighten it up though. And we're gonna work this just like that. Starting to feel the burr form now. Okay, I got a good burr down here. Not any burr at the top. Okay, starting to get a burr, a little closer. Still need to thin it down here at the top. So I'm now sharpening this, and you see we're doing it on the slack. The concept of sharpening, I guess, like this is you bring the edge to zero, you work from one side, and because you're at zero, you push a burr of material over the edge. You go to the other side, you push that burr over back the other way, and then you can strop it, get rid of the burr, and your edge is at zero and sharp. I'm just working on establishing a burr. There's no burr up here, I've got a burr there though. You can feel it in your fingers. 
So now we should be able to buff it and get a very clean, sharp edge. I'm gonna apply some buffing compound to my buffing wheel. This has a very fine abrasive in it that we then apply to the wheel to do just the lightest bit of abrading on it. First of all, we're gonna polish the pole. Nice and shiny. And then we're gonna strop that edge, buff that edge. And sharp enough? I think that'll work. I think I could start a fire with that. But... <laughs> if you don't have a tinder bundle. Use Mike's arm hair. <laughs> not my arm hair. <laughs> or lack thereof. <laughs> we now need to make a handle. This is a piece of ash. You know, the two kind of good handle woods really are ash and hickory. They perform in slightly different ways. The hickory is a little bit of a harder wood than the ash, if I recall correctly back from my hammer making days. And so it's a little more, you get a little more vibration in a hickory, hickory handle, but kind of with that, it's a little bit stronger. You know, you get a little more whip in this, a little extra strength in the hickory. Some people prefer hickory over ash. Some people prefer ash over hickory. Here in the United Kingdom, however, hickory is not very easily available. Right. Now, at, at one point, when I was making hammers, however, what I would do is I would get a handle manufacturer to custom make a blank. And because they were making, you know, tens of thousands of handles, yeah. they were able to get in hickory in enough quantities to get it right. And so what I would do is I'd get the hickory, you know, cut into this rough, like, handle shape, and then I'd be able to, you know, sort out, like, half of them weren't good enough to use for handles, sort out um, the good ones from the bad ones, and that way I was able to get hickory here, because I certainly found with with hammers, if I could do hickory, I wanted to do hickory. Because that little bit of extra hardness, little extra extra strength that the hickory gives was really beneficial. Here for the uh, for the axe, hickory is all we've got, but it's gonna be just fine. And you know, it's it's one of those things where I see you have a preference, but we're gonna be just okay. A-okay with the hickory. It's a very thick board. It is thick. It's a big lot of material. It's a big old boy. It is a two and a quarter inch thick board, and so we could almost rip that thing in half and be just fine. Uh, we do need to change the blade on the bandsaw though. Right, Mike, do you want to have a feel of this? Let me know. Let me know what you think. That's lovely. Good. That's lovely. Good. Great size as well, isn't it? I think it's, I, you know, it's a smaller, smaller little hatchet. Probably going to find a lot of use. Small kind of little carving things. Cool little tool, isn't it? Very good, yeah. It's, it's been fun carving this handle. I've been taking my time with this, making sure that as I work this, we're keeping everything in line, neat and straight and what have you. I've not done a lot of axes, so it's a little bit of a foreign territory for me. But it's certainly, it's nice to, nice to feel the progression going from a big chunky handle to a handle now that's starting to, oh yeah, you could use that handle. It feels good as it's starting to get slimmer, feel better better in the hand. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take that handle out once more and we're going to work up the grits. We're going to sand it. You can hand sand it. Make sure we get a nice, nice finish on that before we drive it home, fit the wedge, cut off the back of the handle and start getting a little closer to being done. So back in the grinding room we go once we knock this out of there for a little more sanding.
that you test your mic. <laughs> Sometimes. Mike, what a true pleasure it amazing. has been. I have been, I, I've learned a lot from this because I haven't done any work with a striker in a long time. I mean, I've not made at all a good number of axes. And so I learned a lot going back to some of, you know, my roots in blacksmithing to a certain extent, working, making tools with a striker, which was a huge amount of fun. So I'm pleased to have had you here. Thanks so much for having me. Honestly, it's, a, it's, been, a, it's been a great project. Oh, man. And we've, we've had mistakes where we've, we've come along them, but actually, yeah. when we look at this now, the finished product, it's awesome. It's nice. It's, it's, it's you know, it's great in the hand as well, doesn't it? With the handle there, this isn't just an oval. I made this cross section to be a little narrower in here than back here, and it, and it just sits in the hand so Brilliant. beautifully, which is really exciting. You'd be able to carve with it. You'd be able to chop at things with it. It's, uh, it's, this is a mean little hatchet. I'm really pleased to have Thanks made it. So much. It's been a huge amount of fun. Guys, make sure that you check out his channel because you're going to see a very different side of this build. You're also going to be able to see him test it. So subscribe to him. There is a link down below. He makes some fantastic videos. You're going you're gonna to be very pleased you did subscribe. In addition to that, fun and exciting news. May 5th and 6th this year, Birmingham at the NEC. I will be at... Makers Central. This is a makers event, so loads of people that make stuff. Big names are there too. Jimmy DeResta, Bob from I Like To Make Stuff, and plenty, plenty more. So make sure that you guys also check out the links in the description for that, where you can buy tickets and you can come meet me. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be hanging around and talking to you all, be able to talk shop and talk about all the fun things that we make. Mike, it has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for coming. I'm very pleased to have brought you along. I am excited for you guys to go subscribe to him. I'm excited to see you. Guys guys at the NEC for Makers Central May 5th and 6th and I'm excited to see you tomorrow on the next episode so if you're new here hit subscribe and I'll see you then